What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. Huge shout out to Lake Norman Chrysler, Jeep Dodge and Ram for providing this truck for today's video. I'll have a link to their website down in the description below. They have a huge selection of all the brand new Jeeps, so definitely check them out. And the model that we're looking at today is finished off in bright white and has an MSRP just under $60,000. Underneath the hood, this features a 3.6 liter six cylinder engine. It produces 285 horsepower and 260 pound feet of torque. The power is either sent to a six speed manual transmission or in this case an eight speed automatic. The power is sent to a four to one rock track heavy duty part time four wheel drive system. And with a current rate around 5,000 pounds and running on a 22 gallon fuel tank, you can expect to get 17 miles per gallon in the city and 22 out on the highway. The overall length is 218 inches with a wheelbase at 137.3. The width is 73.8 and the height is 75 inches. The Rubicon trim level offers better capabilities off road with an approach angle at 43.4 degrees, breakover angle is 20.3, the departure angle comes in at 26 degrees, and we get overall ground clearance at 11.1 inches. When properly equipped, the max towing capacity is up to 7,600 pounds with a max payload capacity at 1,600 pounds. The front end has the traditional seven vertical slots within the front grille. We get LED daytime running lights as well as projector beam headlights. More LEDs find their way on the front fenders. This truck has the red tow hooks on the front bumper as well as more fog lights down below. Very aggressive front end, very traditional for a Jeep Wrangler and of course the new Gladiator. And then as we make our way to the hood of the vehicle, this features the power dome design to it. We have air vents on both sides helping it have an aggressive look to it. We have your manual hood latches up front and then Rubicon written out on the sides. Moving to the side of the truck, this has ventilated disc brakes in all four corners. We also get a two-tone 17-inch wheel with a metallic gray as well as a polished finish to it. We get an iconic Jeep logo in it as well. And the wheels are all wrapped in a Falcon mud terrain tire. This truck also features Fox shocks in all four corners with five link coils. And we get Dana 44 axles front and rear with locking differentials. The overall side profile of the Gladiator has a very proportional look to it. This one does have the optional body colored hardtop roof that is a three piece design. We get black finish on the side mirrors as well as the door handles. You get the Jeep logo and Gladiator badge in the front fender also having the red trim around it just like with the Rubicon logo. There's an aggressive looking vent in the front fender. The body colored fender flares also give this truck a great look to it. This has rock rails down in the lower portion. And then as we move our way to the rear end of the truck this has the optional bed cover. You can see the rock rails in the rear portion of the bumper as well. And then finishing up with the rear with your LED three-dimensional looking taillights, a large Jeep logo in the center of the tailgate with more red trim. We have the standard backup camera below that. Four parking sensors are integrated within the rear bumper. We also get your reflectors and more red tow hooks and then your towing hitch down below. We also have the trailer light plugs next to your license plate. Moving to the top of the tailgate, this features the third brake light as well as the grab handle to open up the tailgate. This is a locking tailgate and it does feature a soft open. And with the tailgate down now, you're able to pull this back portion of the bed cover up, grabbing one of the red latches on each side, unlocks it, and then you can roll away the whole bed cover to reveal the bed. This does have a spray liner in the entire bed. We have LEDs on each side and tow hooks all throughout. So that's a good look at the overall exterior as well as some of the specifications with the Gladiator Rubicon. Comment down below what you guys think of the Rubicon. This one has a little bit better ground clearance, more aggressive suspension and tires comparing it to the other trim levels. But I really like the overall look of it, especially in white and the body colored roof. But I think the overall proportions are really nice for a truck in this size. It looks like a Jeep Wrangler from this position, but then you have the whole bed on the rear. So I really like the overall usability of the truck. And then taking a look at the key now, it looks like a Jeep key, very rugged looking. We'll go ahead and lock the truck. And then we can double tap the engine start stop button and we can go ahead and start it up remotely. And then pressing the button again, we can shut it off. Keeping the truck locked, all I have to do is go up to the door handle. Grabbing the door handle, it automatically unlocks and we can get a great look at the interior. This truck features a full black leather interior. We get black leather along the armrest on the door with some nice red stitching to it. We have a grab handle on the top to help close the door and then another grab handle on the bottom side of this to help you take the doors off and on the vehicle. We have a cargo net down below for a lot of storage space. Your silver release handle as well as all of your window controls and then your lock and unlock. Making our way inside, these are manual seats. The dial up front is the adjustment for your lumbar support. You can raise and lower the seat and then pulling this latch right here is for the recline. These are all black leather with more red stitching to it. Very nice design to it. The leather is very soft. We have Rubicon stitched in the top, black stitching along the headrest. We even get the same black leather and red stitching throughout the center. Making our way to the steering wheel, it's all black leather, more red stitching to it, and some aluminum accents. 
And then now inside the truck, we can take a look at all the different controls. We have all the cruise control settings over on the right side of the steering wheel, as well as your distance pacing. On the left side, we have some Bluetooth and audio controls. Using these arrows right here on this pad, we can scroll through different menus within the screen. Just scrolling down, we have some vehicle information for off-road, your tire pressures, different temperatures, oil pressures, oil life and some other items and then scrolling down we have other settings within your drivetrain you can see if the sway bars are connected or not your pitch and roll meter and then your engine temperature on the left as well as the fuel level on the right with your odometer in the center and your gears we have the tack over on the left side with your four-wheel drive and then your speedometer over on the right side on the left side of the steering wheel, we have all the controls for your headlights as well as dimming the interior lights. We have the cargo outlet you can turn on and off. And then we have more red stitching and black leather along the dash. The Rubicon does have this really nice looking red trim to it. And then on the top of the dash, there is a little bit of storage. In the center, this features the 8.4 inch touchscreen display system. On the climate controls right here, this is very user friendly. You can just tap this to adjust your different fan speeds. The different zones are very easy to control. You can just swipe this up and down for you the temperature. On the bottom, we have a lot of the short cuts which is customizable so you can change what you'd like to go on the bottom we have the navigation just hitting the map to take a look at the graphics this does have pinch to zoom which is really easy to use just like on a smartphone tapping the controls over here we have some quick controls for heated seats tapping the backup camera button we can take a look at that and then going in the center we have different apps as well that you can scroll through one thing very cool if you want something to go along the bottom you can just hold this down and move the icon here it'll replace navigation with that off-road and looking at the off-road pages it's really cool to see everything that's going on for off-road capabilities we can see your steering angle and as i change this you can see how it changes the wheels and the degrees we have the sway bars the front axle locker the rear axle hitting accessory gauges we can see all the different temperatures all at once as well as pressures we have altitude, location, and your drivetrain going to pitch and roll. We can now take a look at that. And then putting the car into reverse, just pulling that once back. Backup camera, of course, pops up again. We have guidelines on it as well as a central line. And then in the center, we have all of your parking sensors that come up. Below the screen, we have manual controls for all of the climate controls. I like how you can use it on the touchscreen or manually as well. So changing this one right here, it changes the fan speed. It'll also come up on the screen. We have temperatures for left and right, heated seats and steering wheel. All of the different climate controls are there. We have your on off for the radio and volume, the tuning over on the right side. And then we have the hazards button, your parking sensors. You can turn traction control on and off. Engine start stop feature. And then below that, we have all four window controls. Very easy to use. Just pull it back to go up, push it forward to put the window down. And then a 12 volt over on the left side. And then opening this up, we have some USBs and an auxiliary. And below all that, we're gonna get a unique thing for the Rubicon. All of this is your locking differential. You can press the button on the left to turn them off. Pushing this forward, it'll lock the front and rear. And then if you push this toggle switch down, it'll lock only the rear. We have the sway bar disconnect, the off-road plus button. And then auxiliary switches over on the right side to add extra lighting, air compressors, and many other off-road accessories. We have your four-wheel drive selector right here, finished off with more leather. We have your gear selector over on the right side with a Gladiator logo in it, which is a really nice touch to it. You can manually shift, which is a great feature. We have two cup holders as well as a slot for your phone, the manual park and brake, black leather and red stitching on the center. You can open this up. You have a pretty good amount of space. It goes down maybe eight or nine inches to it. And then closing it up, this is lockable as well. And there is another opening right here for a little bit smaller items, maybe a phone or a wallet. And then to take a look over at the right side of the dash, you can see more of the red trim to it. We have a grab handle up here as well as one on the A-pillar. To take a look at the glove box, we just open that up. We have a pretty good amount of space in here. You can fit a few items. This is lockable as well. Now we can get a great look at the overall interior. This is based off the JL Wrangler, which is the newest generation for the Wranglers. Interior is really nicely updated comparing it to previous generations. The black leather and red stitching, all the accents have a really good look to it. And then moving our way up top, we can look at the three-piece roof. This one does have the optional inserts in the roof, just giving it a little bit nicer look to it. We have latches on the front. You just twist these. You'll pull down the sun visors and pull these latches right here. And then over on the left side, there's another one you'll twist. And then onto the center, you will twist this as well. And you can remove this one panel and then the next panel. And then taking the rear portion of the roof off, there's a little more work to it with a few bolts to it, but still very awesome to be able to have that open top experience in the Gladiator, just like with the Wranglers. And now to take a look at the rear seating, we can just go ahead and open up the door. Also features all of the black leather and red stitching all throughout it. The backs of the front seats do have some storage on it. The door panels are also finished in the same way. We even get the matching cargo net down below. Now hopping in, we have a grab handle right here. I have the driver's seat set at my height, which is five foot 11. 
And now sitting back here, it's actually really roomy. I have a ton of leg room, maybe like seven inches in front of my knees. My feet fit nicely underneath the seat. So it's actually pretty roomy in here. The seat is also at a very good angle. I don't feel like I'm hunching over too much. It seems like it's reclined just enough. The armrest is in a good spot. And then moving to the center, we can pull this down by just pulling this latch. We get an armrest as well as two cup holders. That's in a really good spot to be comfortable. Looking around now, it's pretty roomy. We have a lot of glass right behind you. Huge windows over on the left side. We have speakers up on the top as well as all of your dome lights in the center as well. And then moving to the back, this does have a manual opening rear glass. And then up front, we do have all of your air vents, your window controls, as well as a three-prong outlet and some USBs. And then just grabbing the base of the seat, we can lift this completely up. It locks up into place. We have some storage down here. This is lockable. There's a handle up front. You can see the lock on it. So you do have lockable safe storage, which is a really great feature to it. Closing that up, we do have some tire changing accessories right here. We can just push this down now, and there is a latch behind the seat. We can pull this up. Folding down these now, you do have some more space back here. Some of these have the optional wireless speaker. There is a sub located back here. So you have a little bit of storage space behind these rear seats and then a lot more storage under them. But overall, for the sizing of this truck, there's definitely a ton of space. So we are now in the Rubicon Gladiator. If you guys remember a little while ago, I did the Rubicon Wrangler and then I did get a little bit of time behind the wheel of the Overland Gladiator. So getting it out now, visibility is awesome. Any type of truck like this, you can see out so well, left and right, so easy to see over your shoulders. Looking forward, that huge hood is right in front of you. It has a really good aggressive look to it. I like how you can literally see the bolts to it, the vents, everything you can see, which is really cool. The overall dash has a great look to it. All the red accents are a nice touch. Right now, just going over a little bit of bumps as we get to the road. This is about all the off-roading we're gonna do in this thing right now. But you can already tell this truck is made for off-road, especially being the Rubicon. It's got more ground clearance, bigger off-road tires, better suspension, the locking diff, sway bar, all those types of things make the Rubicon just a little bit better off-road. But getting up to speed now, going on the road. So the 3.6 liter engine getting us right up to speed. I like how this does have the 8-speed automatic transmission. It just makes it to where it's going to shift a little bit better, use that power much better than the older automatics they used to use. But right now driving in it, just going about 40 miles an hour, it's pretty comfortable. There's not really too much road noise or wind noise. It actually seems pretty normal out on the roads. They did a really good improvement from the JK Wranglers to the JL Wranglers. And then being that the Gladiator is based off of the JL, it has a lot of those good new features to it. But I like how it drives overall. Of course, it's built for off-road, hitting the dirt, going over some crazy obstacles. I don't think you're really sacrificing too much. The only thing I'm noticing comparing the Rubicon to the Overland is just the steering's a little bit vague. I am noticing just having to turn the steering wheel a little bit just to keep the truck going straight. But that's sort of what you're going to get with any type of lifted truck, especially having solid front and rear axles to it. But overall driving characteristics is definitely better than a JK. It seems pretty normal out on the road. And then using the technology that's in this truck, I really like how they've updated it. The 8.4 inch screen is amazing. The graphics are really, really good. The backup camera makes this thing super easy to maneuver. You already have really good visibility, but having an HD backup camera like that is going to make it easier to park the truck when you're towing, anything like that. And you can also opt for a frontward facing camera. So when you are off-road and you can see what's going on in front of you. And with that type of graphics, that's going to be amazing to have. Climate controls I like how you can use it on the screen and using manual buttons down below that makes it to where if you're in a pinch you can easily use the manual buttons that are right there in front of you it's easy to read you don't have to guess what button does what but then when you have it set up right now I have the screen set up with all the climbing control it's so easy to change everything it's exactly the way you would want it to work so I like how the overall user interface within the truck it's very user friendly everything makes a lot of sense it works the way you would think and everything's laid out pretty nicely and then coming up to a stop just hitting the brakes a little bit they seem to do a really good job i like how they have opted for disc brakes in all four corners just going to give you a little bit better performance than throwing drums in the rear and then just in a parking lot making a u-turn the turning radius seems really good this is a longer vehicle than the wrangler but just making a turn like that it seems to do it very well the steering in slow speeds is very lightweight so you're not having to muscle it or anything like that so I like how the slow speed driving, it still feels like the Wrangler, you know, it feels like the Jeep. It's got that easy maneuverability to it. So when you are off-roading with it, the slower speed crawling, it's going to have that maneuverability to get through the tight turns. It does have a much longer wheelbase than maybe a two-door Wrangler, of course, 
but with that said, it still has amazing ground clearance, the approach angle, everything like that is very competitive with trucks in this class. And then back up to some normal driving, I think the power is pretty adequate for what this truck has to offer. It would be nice to have a V8 in it, of course, but I like how given the V6 paired to this new eight-speed automatic, it makes the power very usable. And then off-roading with your lowering gearbox being in four-wheel drive low, having everything in the off-road settings with the sway bars, the lock and diff, it's gonna have the torque and the gear ratios to do what you need to do out off-roading. But then when you are normal driving it still seems like a pretty normal truck that would be a great daily driver you do have a ton of space in the rear it's really comfortable up front you know i'm having no issues sitting here it's about 95 degrees outside the climbing control is working really good very cold air conditioning but i think overall comfort the creature comforts that you're going to want in even a more luxurious vehicle you have it in this truck so you have kind of the best of both worlds you can take the top off and the whole roof off and experience that sort of driving you have the pickup truck bed for all the utility stuff you're going to do and then you still have the jeep off-road capabilities and then a really nicely appointed interior with a ton of room in it so it kind of has so many different things to offer and that's what i think is setting the gladiator apart because there is no other truck that has this type of capabilities all wrapped into one vehicle but i think that is about going to wrap up the on-road test drive at least with the jeep gladiator rubicon this thing is really nice it drives very nicely it doesn't just seem like this big off-road vehicle when you are out on the road because of course 90 percent of the time you're going to be daily driving this out on the road it needs to perform very well out on the normal streets once again, huge thank you to Lake Norman Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram for providing this truck for today's video. Finish up the video going on a little bit of a gravel road, but that's going to wrap up the review of this truck. It's definitely pretty awesome. They are flying off the lots as you would expect, but shout out to them. I'll have their website. Check them out. They have a huge selection of all the Jeeps and all the other Chrysler vehicles, so definitely check them out. But that is it for the video, guys. Give it a huge thumbs up. Smash the subscribe button. We'll see you all next video.